Hello and welcome to Simi Chan Studio. Over the past year, I have been on the hunt for this beautiful Art Deco clown lamp that my auntie has or something similar to it, but I haven't been able to find anything that brings me that same feeling of joy that her one does. So I figured in the meantime, I would make my own. So for anyone who wants some vague guidance about upcycling your own lamp or anyone who just wants to watch someone spend way too much time painting a lamp, then here is my tutorial for you. So here we have our lamp. This one was from the warehouse circa 2016 and she's been in the boot of my car for about six months. So we're just going to remove the lampshade and give her a good dust off. My camera decided to not record the first layer so I'm just using this gesso in white and I am just going to paint many many layers <laughs> until she is um, completely white. I probably didn't need to quite get it to this many layers. I think I did about six or seven um, but I'm gonna paint over it anyway so it didn't really matter too much. Alternatively, I thought about sanding off the top layer of paint because it is wood underneath but I thought that this would be faster and jokes on me because it was not. <laughs> but how good does it look when it is all white? Oh, so good. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to sketch on the design that I have in mind. Um, for this bit here, I wanted it to look like the circus platforms so that's what we're doing here and here I'm just drawing on some little flag decorations that go around the whole thing um, everything else apart from them each side is exactly the same apart from that I also just wanted to more incorporate um, the actual design of the lamp by just having those as its own separate thing so I'm just gonna add in these stars and that's pretty much it for the design part so I'm just adding a little bit of white yellow and red just to make this kind of uh, beigey color uh, for my base um, I am just using acrylic paints for this and I just wanted my colors to reflect more of like an older American type looking circus you know when you think of like I don't know I guess American horror story circus like those kind of colors vintage circus I think that was a word that I was trying to describe there <laughs> so I'm just going to paint this little triangle bit red because red is just the colour of circus. <laughs> cool, and you can see that I have done the other sides as well, but I'm just going to show you the one side, otherwise this video will be like six hours long. Um, and the reds are always a little bit more... Um, translucent so just doing a second layer and it always looks so good like let's just look how much crisper just that extra layer adds there And just mixing green and yellow just to give it that kind of uh, more vintage look <laughs> um, and I'm just painting that bottom bit there so you, you can kind of see what I was um, talking about by leaving the parts of the lamp kind of as they are because it does have that kind of step up which is what um, gave me the original idea for wanting to do them kind of as the platform bases so I do like that about the original design of this lamp 
and mixing yellow so I've got a uh, yellow ochre and just a normal yellow I don't know what you call that and just painting in the stars there the yellow ochre just helps the color to not look so crisp and oh my gosh do I hate trying to paint inside the lines it is just so much harder than painting something <laughs> normally I guess like a painting <laughs> and just doing that second layer of the green Ooh, nice line <laughs> very crisp and again second layer on the yellow and I fuck this bit up here and it annoys me throughout the rest of the video so I am sorry if it annoys you too you will know when you see it <laughs> yep okay I don't know how I couldn't fix it but I couldn't apparently And it is the next day and Little Miss Noodle has come to supervise me. So I'm just doing that top bit in red. And painting the base blue. I do um, end up changing this color of blue it just looked a little too blue for me a little too American um, <laughs> so I do make it a, a deeper um, blue So here I'm just mixing up my new blue since I didn't like the other one. So it's still the same cool blue. I've just added red and less white to it this time just to um, mute the color a bit more but not quite make it purple. Um, and I think it just matches the other colors a lot more, especially because this is kind of the only cool color on the lamp um, it was just a bit jarring before so this looks better in my opinion and it does it's kind of it's looking like it's coming together a bit more at this point so that is quite exciting to see when you're working on a project like this and you can finally kind of see it it's quite nice And we're painting in our little flag. Aren't oh, they so cute? They are very cute. <laughs> and now we're just going to paint in the yellow. 
I would not class myself as a perfectionist but boy do these lines test me <laughs> and I just wanted to do them over so many times but I did just give up at some point so I guess I just proved my own point there I'm not too much of a perfectionist so I'm just going and painting my little stars there and I probably should have mentioned earlier that um, I was painting most of this with a flat brush um, and I've just switched over to a round tip brush now um, but flat tip brushes uh, also give you really clean lines as well so I think the really nice thing about doing these kinds of DIY projects or upcycling projects is even though some people might think a clown lamp is a little over the top or kitsch I think that it's a really nice way to have art in your home that isn't just um, something hanging on your wall and we're just gonna put some little white dots um, up the top there because it's just looking a little bit blank and little Miss Maggie came to say hello <laughs> and I'm just doing my last um, flag and then I think that the base is done okay so I just finished um, painting the base and it never occurred to me up until this point to check that the lamp actually works so I just went and got a light bulb and I'm gonna be so annoyed okay <laughs> moving on to the lampshade so I'm just going to take it apart while keeping the main bit of um, fabric intact so I've got my wireframe bits there and I'm just removing this gross <laughs> plastic from it just so that it can lie flat for me oh yeah <laughs> okay so we've got our pattern piece there and we're going to put our wireframes aside for now and we're just using a calico fabric and Maggie has to be the center of attention always but she is very cute so she gets some pets <laughs> and a little kiss <laughs> there we go all right <laughs> so we've got our um, our fabric right sides together and folded in half and we're just going to trace around the outside of our pattern piece and I'm just gonna give it a centimeter uh, what do you call that? <laughs> Seam allowance, there you go, around the outside and just join those together so that I know where to cut. If only it was this fast, right? Cool, so I'm just going to cut it out and you know, you might want to pin this down if anyone is actually following along to this, but I am lazy when it comes to projects like this and it, and it worked out. It doesn't really need to be too perfect for something like this. And you can see our two pieces there. So we're just going to put one aside. But our plan here, we've got our watercolor paints, some water and some brushes. So I'm going to use the white, the yellow ochre and the uh, burnt umber. Is that what that one is <laughs> and I'm just gonna do a little test to see what colors I actually want to use so that is um, the is just the plain colors and then I've mixed them together there and I like that color a lot more and the white to go in between yeah those two colors that's what we're doing 
so this is something that I've tried once before and it worked out a little bit better than it did this time but what you do is you just wet the um, the wet the fabric but not like soak it so I didn't do it all at once and then you just kind of use the watercolor to add in your color over top so you can see what I do there this um, bit in the middle that I do it I think I used too much water because it did kind of um, the colors run together and I tried to go back and fix that a couple of times but the ones on the outer edge that I do last seem to hold their shape a lot more I also um, I hung this up to dry which was a bad idea because it just ran even more so definitely lie this flat when it's drying so that they stay in place I think also um, adding more color than what I did would give it like a more standout look if that is what you're going for so you can see here it's already kind of um, blending together but yeah I was I think I was being a little stingy with my white because <laughs> I didn't want to buy a whole new watercolor just for a white even though I'm pretty sure they sell them separately anyway so yeah these ones here so you can see I'm using a lot more color in them and then just blending the sides together and they held out a lot better Cool. and now that it's dry um, we're going to paint our fabric so we are going to start with this guy and we're just going to sketch him on do you know it's it's really interesting where we kind of think that we get our ideas from and where like you think that something is your original idea but subconsciously it most definitely was not I thought that I had made the decision about um, the, the background fabric color from just like circus tents and then I just thought that a beige would be a better color than doing it in a red so that my painting would um, stand out a lot more but when I look at my reference image here that is definitely that is just my brain saw that and then just picked up on it and just didn't even recognize where it came from so I just thought that that was interesting and I didn't even I didn't even put it together until I was watching this video <laughs> back but yeah okay so we're sketching in a little clown guy he looks so good he is my favorite one out of all of them and I think you can tell because I spend a lot more time on it than the other ones but he's just so cute look at him Also, what are these hats? I really should look into that. They look like little crayon tips, but <laughs> I don't know. Have you ever seen? I guess I've never seen a clown in real life, but <laughs> I've never seen them portrayed like that. Anyway, I liked it. I thought it was cute. So now I'm doing my little acrobat lady. Also, she's wearing a dress, and I know that that dress looks like it's got like something to keep it down and stop it from flying out but but isn't that just wild so cool wish I could have seen a circus like that someone should contact Cirque du Soleil and get them to do a vintage circus oh my god wouldn't that be amazing maybe it should be me maybe I'll write an email I don't know probably not but anyway <laughs> cool and I made her arm too long so I'm just checking the proportions there and who needs an eraser when you have your fingers and now we are drawing a little juggling man on a unicycle and yep we're just gonna sketch him so I had originally planned to do these three plus a um, a circus tent and it always felt a little weird to have like three people plus a tent as my objects um, but once I had finished this I kind of realized that it didn't really fit anyway so um, 
I did put some different things in there instead and I think it's just um, important when you're doing DIY projects to or just kind of any art I guess I'm talking about um, just to like f go where it goes like don't be too stubborn about making something work just kind of fill it in and if you can see what that contortionist is on um, on the iPad that is where I got the inspiration for the platform for my lamp from if anyone could tell so I finished my little magic bunny rabbit and I've just done some balloons and now we're going to start painting I absolutely love painting with acrylics straight onto unprimed fabric and I know that that's not best practice but if I could do that with all my art that would be the best so if anyone knows <laughs> how to make that work and it's surviving in the long run let me know please because I really love it um, so I've just started with the whites and then done the yellows and now I'm doing mid-tones with the blue and you'll see why I love using acrylic so much on just fabric because I feel like when I paint acrylic on a canvas that has been primed I feel like it just kind of sits there and kind of like uh, like slides around but when it's like this it almost just like absorbs into the fabric and you can add more white to make it translucent but it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem so stiff I guess is what I'm saying so I just kind of go back and forth between the highlights and the shadows just to get that 3d look and we're doing his little lips <laughs> so cute So with the nose, I'm just starting with the mid-tone, then the shadow, and then the highlight. And I feel like it's just, uh, that one was just super easy to like get the effect. And I think it came out looking really nice. So I'm just going in again with the highlights. Like, I think this is the thing I miss about using oil paints so much is the ability to layer without having to wait for it to dry. I'm very impatient so I think a lot of my oils can often look a little flat in comparison but I guess maybe after this project I will be doing more acrylics because I had been off them for a while but I've been ranting about them <laughs> for the past I don't know five minutes so I like them. <laughs> So I was quite hesitant to do this outline because I think, you know, when you get told that like outlines are the worst thing that you could possibly do to a painting, you really want to avoid them. But actually, I think that the outline on this just makes him stand out so much more. So I'm really glad I did that. I think he might have just faded in a little bit with the background too much if I didn't do that. So now I'm just painting my balloons and again mid-tones, then darks, then highlights and the little strings. <laughs> that was quick and easy. Cool. So we're on to our acrobat again. So 
so for the skin tone I'm pretty sure I just added yellow ochre, cool yellow, red and white um, and I think I for the shadows that I do I just added in um, blue and red for that one with some yellow ochre but yeah so I just go back and forth adding in more highlights because that um, the color actually darkened down quite a bit once it started to dry compared to the other ones so I go over that quite a few times And I liked the outline so much on my little clown that I wanted to give her an outline as well. And of course I had to add stars to her dress because that's the best and I did kind of question her hair a little bit from the reference photo I thought it was a little odd but I actually really like it so there you go <laughs> And even though I personally don't have anything against using black in painting, I feel like it has been so ingrained <laughs> from me from high school <laughs> art class to never use black. So I feel like I've gotten pretty good at um, recreating black and grey as much as possible. So my secret, <laughs> I don't think it's a secret, is just blue and red with a little bit of yellow. I feel like the yellow really makes the biggest difference for when you do the greys because um, they can just look purple so quickly. So the yellow really helps it to look grey. And we're giving our bunny some fur. When I was um, researching the images that I was wanting to use for this, a lot of the ones that I really liked were the ones of like the elephants and the monkeys and things like that. But I just, I couldn't get myself to use them. Even though uh, it's, such a, it's such a fine line like emotionally and <laughs> personally because like it was horrible that they used them but also it is what happened and the imagery is beautiful I don't know it makes me feel really weird and as someone who loves vintage things <laughs> it I don't know it is like a, a thing that comes up quite a bit where like history and then what we consider right and wrong now comes into play as well yeah I don't know thoughts <laughs> so now we're just painting our last guy and his unicycle um yeah I feel
feel like I just paint him pretty much the same as I paint the other ones. So I'll just let you watch this one. And we are done so I am going to sew those two sides together right sides together along there and we're bringing back our other piece from before if you'd forgotten about it <laughs> so that's gonna be the inside of our lamp so I'm just gonna sew down both of them and apparently give myself a guide there we go <laughs> So I'm just using a straight stitch on both of those. And I'm just making sure that the seams are flat because we don't want bunchy seams. And this, this took me way too long to figure out. It's kind of embarrassing to cut it out. So we want the right sides facing each other and then pinning along the bottom bit there. <laughs> You'd think right sides together. Oh wait, is that even what it was? Yeah, yeah, right sides together. There we go. <laughs> cool. And then just sewing another straight seam across that Cool, and now we're just gonna turn it inside, inside the right way, <laughs> yeah, and fold the bottom bit back up into itself, if that makes sense. <laughs> and I'm just trying to squeeze this bottom part of the ring frame into there, which was a mission. It was not that easy. <laughs> and I'm just pinning across the top um, with the salvage edges into themselves. Yep, just a seam like that. So that the frame, the wire frame is already in there while this is happening. Also, sewing is not exactly my forte. I can do it well enough just to get by so if anyone has a better idea if they're making their own lamps then feel free <laughs> and I'm just sewing along the edge that I just pinned Thank you. 
So I'm just placing the other part of the frame inside where it's going to be and I'm going to hand stitch, <laughs> so much fun, hand stitch the um, around the top so that the ring around the top <laughs> stays, you know what I mean, yep, <laughs> okay. So that the thread goes up and around. Um, yeah, explaining not my forte, probably even less so than sewing. <laughs> And we are done. So I'm just going to tie that off and I kind of just shimmied the fabric around. So I'm just going to put the lamp shade on the lamp base and I'm just going to hand sew around the base of the ring um, the same way that we did with the top. I just found that this kept it a lot more uh, tight and in place looking just looked cleaner. Now I'm just going to add the trim to the bottom of the lamp and this originally was a had the two colors twirled together so I untwirled them but I'm sure there is an easier trim <laughs> that you can use if you are not as lazy as I am. So I'm just hand stitching all the way around with the same kind of stitch that I did before and patience is a virtue. <laughs> So I'd never really done this before, so I am kind of just winging it here. So I just cut off the excess and then tried to kind of stitch around them together. I don't know if there's a better way to do that. So I'm just tying it off there and then I am just putting a little bit of glue around the fabric so that it didn't um, fray. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm just going to do the exact same thing with the top and we're almost done. The really fun part about um, like recording this as a video and then watching it back is you get like get to experience how good it feels to finish it like all over again like it's it's so exciting to see this finally coming together and I'm just gluing that top bit of the other one ah look at it exciting <laughs> and there you have it all done looking so good <laughs> I love it so I hope for anyone who's watching and if you made it this far, oh my god, what are you doing? Um, I hope that you enjoyed my little tutorial.